Lions have first touch in this second stanza. Fordham has yet to score thus far this season. It's their third fixture, and the Rams have just had trouble generating much offense, but looking to get something going in this second half. They have a lot of work to do because the Lions were in control on both ends in the first 45 minutes. Here's Kayla Davis feeding it to the back line. Davis, well, they've moved to the back today. With Riley Lucas out due to an injury. And I think Kayla Davis can do a lot of what Natalie Ambrose did for four years for Columbia at the left back position, defend really, really well, and also be an option moving forward out of that left back spot. Mentioned that Kayla Davis spent a lot of time in the center of the midfield last year for Columbia, so certainly can attack from that position and give them another option going forward. Outside the box, and Lamort with the right hand, keeping the Lions from a third goal. And that's just Emma Anderson right there. So good at pinning her defender inside the box, able to spin to her right, to her left. That time spins to her left, gets the right-footed shot off, and a wonderful save by Lamort again, knocking that one over the crossbar. The fourth save of the afternoon for Lamort. Another corner, more chaos. The Lions trying to get another, and Lamort a magnet to the ball there. I think that was Gracie Wall with the shot there from right around the penalty spot. And a great save again by Lamort. Good positioning. May not have mattered. As we see a free kick here. But when you see how good defensively Columbia is and how few amount of goals that they give up, you, you tend to think if you don't watch them, this is maybe what you were talking about in the first half that uh, Coach Bartholomew was talking about. Well, they just defend and 11 players behind the ball and they're parking the bus and making it really tough to score. But Columbia's up 2-0 at halftime. And the first couple of minutes, they have two or three great chances already as they push for that third goal. And the Lions combined outscore their opponents last year, 34 to 13. Over two goals per game. And Coach Bartholomew felt like that's a big step in the right direction. And now she thinks all the offensive pieces are together to even tick that total up even more. Well, because you have some wonderful first-year players that you're adding into the mix as well with, uh, with a lot of returning players. So we talked to the depth that Columbia has this year the best in all of the years for Coach Bartholomew, and we see it uh, on all levels. You know, there's depth in the, the midfield, the defense, up top. And there's four goalkeepers on the roster as well. Bartholomew in her 19th year as a head coach, but now at 24 as a coach, period, and she kind of laughed to herself before the game. She's like, wow, it's, it's been that long. And in year five at Columbia, she has put together some great results, particularly right here in New York City. It's a team that has gone down to the final game of the year, the last few years in the Ivy League, with a chance to win a championship, which has not happened in quite some time here on the women's side. But in this league, the way the season's structured, making it tough with no tournament to, to win the league, as any coach would say in any conference, they'd rather see their team win the regular season than the conference tournament because to them the regular season is that much harder because it, it spans as long as it does instead of maybe just bottling up three days of magic. I think it speaks to the Lions and what they're doing that they've been as close as they have been in the regular season and maybe this year can be that breakthrough in a league that is deep. Yep. 
just shows the consistency that the program has has had for years now and that you expect to see from them in every game because of their ability to defend and able to do enough when you talk about the team that Princeton had last year mm. uh, they, they were absolutely awesome at the national level they proved it in the tournament and Columbia went on the road at Princeton for a 2-0 win nobody else was able to beat Princeton before the tournament started last year and that was just a great win and, and frankly not a surprise when you've seen the progression of this program for the last few years Princeton ranked nationally and in the East Regional United Soccer Coaches ranking, first one of the season, Princeton is second behind Georgetown. But at number eight in the East Regional rankings, the Columbia Alliance, and that says a lot too. The Lions ahead of the Providence Friars on the Big East, St. Joe's out of the Atlantic 10. Yeah, I don't think in, on the women's side or the men's side, frankly, that the Ivy League soccer programs get enough respect at the national level. And I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to watch the men and women in the Ivy League play for a long time, and they prove it every year. There's usually only one, unfortunately, representative on the men and women's side that make the national tournament, but they prove it every year that they're worthy to compete at the national stage against any competition in the years when the men and women get multiple bids into the national tournament all of the teams tend to do real well and have a lot of success so i'm not quite sure why uh, the selection committee doesn't always reward the ivy league on the men and women's side with a second bid more often than they do on this ivy league a10 showdown thus far it belongs to the ivy columbia has been all over fordham on a 2 nothing lead, two first half goals, one in the 25th minute, and one with, how about this, one second left in the first half. Talia Tyler, talk about being clutch, and that's something that in August, if you're Coach Bartholomew, you love seeing your team pull that off as a late execution situation. Well, they got the reward for really, uh, th they were two goals better than Fordham in that first half, just like they may have been on Friday night at Drexel. They didn't get that second goal at Drexel, and it ended up coming back to hurt them in a 1-1 draw. And that second goal here was huge. Uh, you'd expect that uh, it's going to be difficult for Fordham, given their struggle to score goals in the early going here in 2018, to, to try to find two here in the second half, especially the way C Columbia is continuing to attack. Lions pressing forward with numbers. It's Co. She's already got one. And was looking for more give and go. Kayla Davis, though, on the receiving end. Near side. Davis with a move. Headed away. Here's Emily Co. That one sent away, but Davis with a smooth move. Well, that's why I think she could be really good at left back here. I mean, she's great in the center of the midfield and was last year as a freshman player. But her ability now to be able to attack from that left back spot, you can see the skill that she has on the ball and the confidence that she has on the ball. It's just another weapon that Columbia has going forward. And Sal, I know this is your favorite moment of the game. That was a smooth move. And that smooth move of the game is brought to you by Pure Silk Disposable Razors. Very nice. Look at you. You didn't, you didn't strong arm that, that into the, to the discussion at all there. That was as smooth as it gets. Already in midseason form. <laughs> Glad that you're with us on this Sunday afternoon on ESPN Plus as Columbia up two to nothing on Fordham. And obviously, you're looking for that, that third here, but this could also be a chance for Columbia to use some of their depth as this game gets deeper, give some other players some time to get some experience that can go a long way when it comes this early in the season. Well, it certainly did that in the first half. They brought nine substitutions on in the first half. So, yeah, we'd expect that they would do that again here in the second half. Fordham substituted pretty liberally as well as we see them making a change here. Brooke Salmon will leave. And it looks like Mora. Holst coming back in. 
So both coaches, you have to this early in the season. Again, why not? You have to see what you have. You have to give all op players an opportunity to show what they can do. Uh, and as well as trying to uh, to build some game fitness. But both teams coming off a Friday night game on the road and coming back Saturday afternoon and some hot weather here on the turf. So this makes sense. And the players that have come in for both teams have really done a nice job. There hasn't been a, a huge drop off or if a drop off at all in the level of play, especially on the Columbia side when they've gone to their bench. Miller is looking for another Ram to connect with. We haven't said a lot about Sophie Whitehouse, but that's because her back line's been so dominant. But Whitehouse helping the Lions to such a terrific last season and had that outstanding goals against average. She has already had quite the career, and they anticipate it just rolling forward because of the amount of experience she presents now. I tell you, goalkeepers don't mind. They'll play every game, never having a touch. If they can get that zero at the end of the match, that just brings confidence from game to game. White House knows what she's capable of. Her teammates do as well, and she will be called on uh, at various times to uh, to save games for Columbia throughout the season. But there's nothing wrong with taking a uh, an easy, clean sheet early in the year if you can get one. You had a couple in your time. Sal Rose Amelia, the Columbia legend, All-American. They didn't seem easy, <laughs> none of them back in those days. No. What do you think is the biggest difference in the sport through the years? If Goal there is one. Goalkeepers having to be soccer players, you know, being able, you know, back in my time, we never had to play with our feet, so we never really trained to do that. Uh, I think goalkeepers' hands were much better back in the day. The ability to come off lines and collect crosses in traffic was more of a skill, more of an art back then. Uh, that's gone, but really from just watching the game and seeing how it's played these days as Anderson causing some trouble. Nice job there by Lamort, but really I th just think it's the pace and the power of play that's totally different. It's much faster. It seems much more athletic of a game. Um, I don't want to say less of a skilled game, but I think it's it's players with skill now being able to play at a much faster pace than they did back uh, back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago. It's The game is evolving, especially here in America, and just a much quicker pace the way it's played. Fordham has through the years been a solid defensive program, but you think of Columbia women's soccer, you think of defense, but it's almost as if today, because of the amount of possession the Lions have been able to generate offensively and the amount of control they've had on the offensive end, that's put Fordham in a tough spot. This is a Rams team that only lost one to nothing to one of the best programs in America in South Carolina, and the Rams felt like they put together a good effort just over a week ago. Well, that is a good result. one nothing at South Carolina against a top five team in the country. Emily Coe, top of the 18, and over the cage. But, you know, like Brazil has done this for years. Barcelona has done this for years. Those are teams that are known for their high-powered offense. But when you look at the amount of goals that they allow, or I should say the amount of goals that they don't allow, uh, a lot of that goes to the fact that they have the ball all the time. And you know, the best defense is a good offense. So if you can keep possession the majority of the time, like Columbia has done, you know, of course, you need good skilled players. You need good disciplined players. You need players that understand their roles and, and good balance and shape on the field. You need all those things. And that comes from a team that's very well organized and very well coached. And it's something that we've come to expect from the Columbia Lions for years now. <laughs> Lions looking for a third. Two first half goals, one in the 25th, one with just one second left. Talia Tyler, the first of her Lions career. couple of passes in a row for Fordham, but 
goes out for a goal kick. We were talking about Princeton and the Tigers in just a little bit are at Boston U this afternoon. They are able to get past New Hampshire on Friday night 2-0. But that'll be an interesting matchup between Princeton and Boston. Yeah, expect Princeton with what they have returning and what they've done last year. Just a, a great amount of still skilled players, offensive players for the Princeton Tigers. Um, they're ranked in the top 15. I think 14 is as high as I've seen them so far this year, and that's not a surprise. And that's a team that certainly is the team to beat in the Ivy League and a team that the Columbia Lions have at home this year. They were the only team to, to beat Princeton in the Ivy League last year. They did that on the road, 2-0 win for Columbia. This year they have them at home, which could go a long way to deciding this year's champion. A scramble in the box, and the Lions trying to clear it away, and they do just that. Yeah, Fordham has put a little bit of uh, possession together here in the last couple of minutes. They've put some more numbers forward into the attack. They've been able to string some passes in the final third. They've looked more dangerous right. lately than they have the whole match. Well, and with just one shot, they need to figure out a way to adjust and, and get some looks on target. That one to the left of the net, and Lamort with a dive, but not needed. And so it's a goal kick. Substitute coming on for the Lions now. Matty Tamaris, the junior from Warren, New Jersey. Lots of New Jersey and New York natives on the pitch this afternoon in this Metro showdown. Early in the season, but both these teams looking for their first win. So for Columbia, it's been a brilliant performance a year after they fell 2 to nothing at Fordham. Both these teams know how to protect their home pitches. Selly was looking for a ram at the top of the 18, didn't work out. But now she gets the ball right back. That is a great job. Juliana Maselli to, to get back in there and battle. Lane Cronin, the senior, looking to spark her team. That's a beautiful ball and saved. White House is there. I think it was at Morgan Busaka at the far post. It was a great turn at midfield from Lane Cronin and the run down the wing. We see the tail end of it here, getting into the box, angling towards the post, the cross right across the six, and Busaka's there all alone. Wonderful save by Whitehouse. Just the second shot for Fordham, and Sophie Whitehouse hasn't been tested much, but when you test her, Whitehouse is... One of the best in the Ivy League, one of the best that you'll find in this area in women's soccer. So much for that easy shutout for Whitehouse. That's a huge save there. <laughs> it's a wonderful ball from Lane Cronin, exactly like you would try to coach her to do. Serve that ball across the six-yard box, far enough out that Whitehouse can't come and collect it. And in a dangerous area where any run to the near post, to the middle of the goal, or to the far post is going to have a chance for Fordham. And it was the far post for Morgan Pisaka. And Whitehouse was able to go from the near post to the far post, make herself big, and make a wonderful save to keep it 2 nothing. Columbia has to be careful here because the 2 nothing lead is as dangerous as it gets. They've had all the momentum. They've had all the opportunities. They've dominated the possession, the shots, the shots on goal, every single thing. If Forden gets the next goal here to make it 2-1, to one, Sophie Whitehouse working on what would be her 10th career shutout. Mm -hmm. 
Two nothing Columbia. Fordham looking to create an opportunity. It was a bullet, but right off of a lion, and Nacelli will have it for a throw. And credit to Fordham since they've dealt with some pressure in the early going here in the second half. They've really been able now to kind of turn the game around just a little bit, create some chances for themselves. And again, at 2-0 down with still almost 24 minutes to play, if they're able to get that next goal to go 2-1 and then switch the momentum into their favor, they can make this a more difficult final 23 and a half minutes than Columbia thought they were in for just 10 minutes ago. And it's a commitment to numbers forward. We can see it here from this view. Fordham pressing up high, but pushing a lot more numbers forward into the attack. And, you know, now you you got to wonder, is it because they're committing more numbers forward that they're getting these chances, or is Columbia pulling back just a little bit with that second goal? Or is it a little combination of both? But whatever it is, it's, it's making Fordham seem a lot more dangerous than they were the entire first half. Fordham with two shots on goal thus far, one in each half, trying to figure out a way to cut this Columbia lead in half. Holst is vacuumed up by the All Ivy League honoree last season. It's Sophie Whitehouse. <laughs> Great accomplishment from White House last year and the entire team, really. It's a, it's a team thing, but she only allowed one goal in seven Ivy League matches. And when you think about some of the offensive players, uh, certainly Princeton, how great they were le last year offensively, and White House was able to shut them out on the road. And then you talk about the players that Yale has and really all the teams just great great offensive players up and down in the women's game in the Ivy League and for Sophie Whitehouse to go the entire season and only give up one goal in league play was it just shows how how good she was but really how good the entire team was and um, you know, not that I, I look a whole lot at all Ivy League teams and things like that but she put together a season individually in the Ivy League that's never been done before and she was second team all Ivy. So sometimes you have to throw those things out the window and just appreciate what she was able to accomplish. You use it as motivation. And the Washington, D.C. native has been nothing short of sensational today. Sophie Whitehouse in net for Columbia. And she's preserved this shutout. Her defense has been very solid. And the offense, a great output thus far today. Could they put the exclamation point on in the final 20 and change? Brief water break now, and we'll use that water break to tell you about our sponsors. Columbia Women's Soccer is brought to you by Nissan. A win for your team is a win for you, too. There's nothing quite like it except driving a Nissan. Get to Nissan, a proud supporter of college athletics. And shop ChooseNissan.com. That's ChooseNissan.com. Take on today. Columbia Women's Soccer is brought to you by Pure Silk Premium Disposable Razors with Close Shave Technology. You're looking good, America. Columbia Women's Soccer is also brought to you by Academy Bus, the official team carrier of the Columbia Alliance. The best choice to travel between Manhattan, New England, and Washington, D.C. is Go Buses. 
Book a seat on one of our new buses and enjoy a hassle-free ride, power outlets, and free Wi-Fi. To learn more or purchase tickets, visit www.gobuses.com. And for the latest in Columbia Lions gear, visit the all-new Lions Store. Available online at store.gocolumbialions.com. Choose from a selection of merchandise, including Nike and other top brands. That's the Lions Store at store.gocolumbialions.com. Sal Rosamilia, John Fanta with you. It's the Ivy League on ESPN+. Plus and Columbia has put up a tremendous home opening showing here, up 2 nothing on Fordham with 21 and change to go. That was a well-timed water break, though. Columbia, I think, needed that to get focused again and understand what Fordham's doing here, committing some more numbers forward. I don't want to say Columbia got sloppy. It gives credit to Fordham for taking over the last five or ten minutes there prior to the water break, but a chance for Columbia to kind of say, all right, you know, let's not give up that goal here. Temps in the mid-80s, and on the turf it can feel like mid-90s. Fordham still looking for the first goal of their season. And to start your year with the first 225 minutes scoreless, they don't want that to balloon into 270. Yeah, but regardless, I think uh, how the final 20 minutes go here for Fordham, I think Coach Jessica Clinton can take some positives out of how they've turned it around here. They are starting to get through an amazing defense, getting some opportunities, having more possession here, certainly in their offensive half, than even some possession in the final third. So this is some good things and things that they can build off, even if they don't come back and get a result here today for Fordham. Uh, there's some positives here that they can look to and take away, and hopefully as they move on with the rest of their schedule. But there's still time here. Any goal in the next 10, even 15 minutes that Fordham can get, if they get one, will make the end of this game really exciting, unless Columbia can find a, a third goal here. Lions looking for something in transition now. Cut off. Wonderful job by Charlotte Rossi, the sophomore. Alexander. Tamaris with a move. Sending it out wide. And this is what Columbia's offensive approach is. Looking to move it out wider and then get it in as Wall Three straight beautiful passes by the Lions. Just out of the reach of Tomar. That was some really good action in the middle of the field. So the sky is getting overcast now here in New York. Well, it feels good to cool it down just a little bit. That's right. Nice little breeze off the water. We're warm up here. It's and a scorcher up here. <laughs> it's hotter up here than it is on the field. You were as cool as can be walking the field before the game. It's the only time I've ever been told that. <laughs> well, it was a bad sign when the people working the game and working the cameras were sitting outside of the booth before the game because it was cooler out there. We knew we were in for it. talking about those water breaks and how they, they fit in well for the two teams. They, For us, it helps. It, it got you a water break, and it gets all the sponsorships in. So it, it's a win-win. It's a for everybody. For everybody. It's Columbia as a couple. They're one sub and a, a Ram coming in as well. And our man Mike helping us out on the end, he gets a break the whole time, and he just keeps eating s'mores Dunkin' Donuts. He doesn't have to worry about any sort of breaks. His entire game is a break. Bailey Peacock back in for Columbia. You're a goalkeeper on the pitch and on the air. Nothing gets past you, Sal. 
Well, Mike took the only s'mores donut. I've been dry, dying to try one. He took it all for himself. Columbia 2, Fordham nothing. Just under 17 left in New York City. And the Lions have put together just what the doctor ordered on this Sunday, but a turnover here. Middle of the box, Rams looking to get on the board. And Miller had it taken from her. Two Lions were swarming her. We have not seen, you rarely see this Columbia team make any sort of technical mistake, but even when they make a slight one, they were all over it. Yeah, but it's, it's gotten a little sloppier here as a play on. That could have been a foul. Referee decides to play on there. Really was no advantage for Fordham. Their player Cronin there was surrounded by three Lions. But they've got to clean it up. I mean, if this game continues here and they don't give up a goal, you, know, you don't want to end the game like this. They were so dominant and so good and so clean for the majority of it. But the last 10 or 15 minutes, Fordham's found their way into the match, and it's been because of some slight mistakes that you're talking about. So it's not the way you want to end the game. Try to fix it here in these final 15 minutes. Fordham now, for the first time in the entire game, looks more likely to score the next goal than Columbia does. Only seven fouls between the two teams and no cards. It's been a cleanly played game. Both these teams are very technical in their approach, and they play a brand that's really sound in their approach. Well, if you're organized, you're not defending from behind all the time, and both of these teams are very well organized. Their shape is always good. They're tough to break through, so the only real frantic defending has been blocking shots inside the box, but defensively, they're in good position often and they don't put themselves in in numbers down situations which would cause you to have to foul a lot goal kick caught right off by the Rams who are pressing forward Amanda Miller the leading returning scorer swinging it to the middle roughly a good thought but off to the left You know, and sometimes when you make wholesale changes like both teams have, but here at Columbia now they've made a bunch of changes. They've even now changed a little bit uh, of where players were playing on the field. We saw Kayla Davis move to the midfield. She's not on the field any longer right now, but um, sometimes you're going to lose the, the flow of the match. You know, things were going really well there for Columbia, and it continued to go well despite all the changes in the first half, and now maybe in the second half some of these changes are, are a little tougher for them to uh, to maintain the level that they had had for the first 60 or 65 minutes of the game. Columbia scoring both goals in the first half. Emily Cohn, the 25th minute. Talia Tyler, the freshman, her first career tally as a Lion, coming with one second left in the first half. That is a goal that she'll remember forever. Her first college goal, just in the nick of time. And an important goal when you look at how things have played out in this second half. A Lion's gotten loose. It's Tomar who puts the exclamation point on for the Lions. Malika Tomar. The freshman scores her first goal as a Columbia Lion. And it's all Columbia on this Sunday afternoon. And there's the tail end of it there. You see the near post, Lamort trying to come out and cut down the ankle angle, and the freshman Malika Tomar saw that uh, Lamort was giving up a little bit more on the near post than she should have there, and some good composure, composure for Tomar to put it by her, but really we saw the tail end of that. Talia Tyler was the one that played a great give and go there, a great one-touch pass from Talia, Talia Tyler in the midfield. So give that first-year player an assist to go with her first goal here at home, the first match that they've played here at the Rock. 
but it was a wonderful one-time pass from Tyler that sent Tomar in on a 35, 40-yard breakaway all alone, and then Tomar really comfortably, confidently put that ball away, and that should finally do it there. Against the run of play, Fordham had a good go there for the last 15 minutes or so and looked pretty dangerous, but that should just about put it out of reach. Coming in the 77th minute, Malika Tomar from Talia Tyler. And the lion of the match is easy to select. Talia Tyler, the first goal of her Columbia career, the first assist of her Columbia career. And the future is now for the Columbia Lions. They return several of their leading scores from a year ago. Sure, they lost their leader, but between what they return and the freshmen that we've seen on display today, wow. Yeah, and that you know that's pretty much par for the course for this coaching staff. You know, we talk a lot about Coach Bartholomew, but there's a bunch of coaches there, and we see it every year. And that's how you maintain a, a high-level quality program is you continue to have to bring in first-year players who can make an impact in the game because you're always going to have that group of seniors that move on uh, and Coach Bartholomew, since her time here at Columbia, has always had a young group, has always had a bunch of first-year players, second-year players have a big impact on the success of the program. It seems like this year is another one of those instances. Sal, we talked to Coach Bartholomew before the game, and she told us that, look, it's one thing for me to say that I think this is the deepest team that I've had as the head coach of the Lions. This is year five for her. She said it's another thing to execute it. We talk about being better offensively and getting opportunities. Well, the talk, it's walking this afternoon in New York City, and it's the Lions who have executed perfectly. Well, she's given just about every player on the roster, every player suited up here today has had an opportunity in both halves to make a difference in the game. And, you know, I felt in the first half of Maris Hemmings, who didn't start the game, came in and, and, and turned the fortunes around for Columbia uh, early, got an assist on a goal in the first half and, and kind of changed it. And there's been so many players who didn't start who have come in and made a difference. And didn't she say before the game, Coach Bartholomew, that Hemmings, it's great to bring her in off the bench. She's a senior presence that can stabilize the game and push it forward. And just give a pace to the game. After some players have gone for 15, 20 minutes, maybe they're starting to breathe a little heavier there, and she comes in and just changes the pace of the game and, and makes a difference. But, look, a lot of players have been able to do that today. And, you know, here's your chance. It doesn't matter what year you are. Uh, it doesn't ma matter what kind of success you've had in the past. You're going to get an opportunity with, with, uh, with Coach Bartholomew to prove what you can do, and some of these first-year players are, are taking it and running with it early. A dominant performance by Columbia in their home opener. Goals in the 25th, 45th, and 77th. And Talia Tyler has arrived. A goal and an assist. And after a 1-1 draw at Drexel on Friday, which Columbia was disappointed about because they felt like they could have broken through and won, this has been an exceptional performance as we have a goalie substitution now. The Lions will go to Marie Matthews to finish this one up. She'll get 10 minutes of action. And Matthews, the senior, it's always good to see the veterans get some time here in their final year of their career. And for Matthews, she's behind a great one in White House, but getting a look here. This is the type of thing where a coach rewards a player for the work that she puts in. And Matthews last year playing in two games, over 56 minutes of action. It is always good early, you never know, you know, to try to get everybody into the games as early as you can during the season. Let them get those early season jitters out of the way. 
it bears noting as well, the Lions are without Riley Lucas, their senior captain, who is really the glue of the defense. But again, it's that depth and it's just that organization and the discipline that the team is able to show. And you're able, you know, that's a huge loss not having Riley Lucas here today, but you just see, you know, the depth that the coaching staff has talked about and you just see the quality of the coaching and, you know, just the teamwork. And that's why this team is successful. You know, it's 11 players kind of moving as one when they have the ball, defending as one when they don't have the ball. And some more changes coming here for both teams. But, you know, this is what we expect from Columbia. When they get a win, especially at home, being able to finish it off. For Columbia, here's how the upcoming schedule looks next weekend. A trip out to the Rocky Mountains, followed up with a road match at Sacred Heart. But then, Sunday, September 9th on ESPN Plus, Alliance hosting Ryder. And then on Thursday, September 13th, a 6 o'clock showdown with another local in Hofstra, also on ESPN Plus as part of the Ivy League on ESPN Plus. Is it too late to make an appeal to uh, to Rocco to see if we can go call those games from Colorado next week? I think that'd be a nice trip. Mike's raising his hand here next to us. He'll go do it for free. Nice time of year to go visit Colorado. Isn't that the truth? That does sound like a fun time. That's the type of experience that Columbia student athletes get to go somewhere that maybe a lot of the players haven't gone before. They're heading out to Denver for two games. It's the kind of stuff that produces those stories, and it builds chemistry for a team when you go on an early season trip like that. It's really cool to see these teams throughout the Ivy League and here at Columbia get chances to, to do things like what the Lions will do next weekend. And it's uh, quality opponents and it's good preparation as they get through the early part of their schedule before they start playing Ivy League matches. The Rams looking for something positive to take out of this one. If you have to score this season, that breakthrough it's as close as it's been, Maggie roughly just off to the right. And for Fordham, a team that scores by committee, they need somebody to step up and break through. And you see Sam Slusher there hurrying over to defend a little bit on roughly. He was able to cover the far post. That was the important part there. You saw Marie Matthews, the goalkeeper, was covering the near post. Slusher was able to put her body in a position there defensively to kind of cut off that far post shot and there was nothing left for Ruffley to shoot for, and she ends up missing the target. As a defender, you don't always have to win a tackle. You don't always have to block the shot there. She just put her body in the right position, took half of the goal away. Goalkeeper is in charge of that near post. So neither one of them had to stop the ball. Neither one of them had to make a save, block a shot, do anything, but it forced Ruffley to, uh, to miss the target from close range. Stephanie Shin, the senior, checking back in for the Lions. And Coach Bartholomew is saying before the game that she's nearly 100% healthy. They've gotten her back in the swing of things and looking to get her more consistency. But with how much depth this Columbia team has, and considering they've missed a star captain today in Riley, this is really something. With Riley Lucas out. For the defense to be on the verge of a shutout and to put up three goals in the home opener. It's a statement maker by the Lions. Could there be more? Oh, nice. Gastaldi! Oh. So close. Rachel Alexander there with a chance from distance. Again, Columbia has shown an ability to play one touch passing in the middle of the field. That's really picked apart the Fordham defense. That happened again. They've gone from their defensive half to a great goal scoring chance in a matter of seconds with a couple of one touch passes. And Rachel Alexander was yep. able to get it over 
Lamort's head there, the goalkeeper from Fordham, but just missed the target from distance. Got that dish and, and nearly put in the chip. be a Columbia throw. <laughs> Slusher. in the 25th, 45th, and 77th minutes for Columbia. First was Emily Coe, there's a turnover. That one just right of the net. A little sloppy there by the Lions. The Rams can't capitalize as good look there for Bornstein. Yeah, Columbia was doing well there under high pressure from Fordham with a lot of good one-touch passes again. And then Gracie Wall just got one kind of stuck on her foot in the turf and Bornstein jumped on top of it. Good shot from distance, but again, just off the target. Really want to finish this one out if you're Columbia. Get that first shut out of the season. Prove that dominance that you're so used to seeing from them at home, not just dominant and winning a lot of games, but also dominant and not giving up goals, shutting out a lot of your opponents. This is a game that's been pretty comfortable the entire time. You don't want to give up a goal here in the final two and a half minutes. See it out to the end. Take that momentum into your next match in Colorado. one point last year, the Lions had put together six straight clean sheets. One of those, an 11 goal performance against Widener. That was just tremendous. I believe at that, at, during that run there was uh, during the Ivy League, I think Columbia went to five and oh, maybe at one point. Goodness. In the league. with a shutout of Princeton in that stretch as well. Just over 90 ticks to play in New York City. Or today in this battle of Metropolitan squads, it's been all Lions. A year after Fordham took this match up 2-0 in the Bronx, Columbia has asserted itself in this early season encounter it's a bullet that's deflected, sent away. It was blocked by Rachel Alexander there, the forward for Columbia. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not just the goalkeeper that gets shutouts. It's not just the back four. You know, Rachel Alexander is a forward, is a winger for Columbia. It's the final minute of a 3 nothing game. And she's putting her body in the way there to block a, a powerful shot from the top of the box. And uh, that's what it takes. You know, it's those little things that, uh, that it takes when you're talking about over the course of a long season that make a difference. That one sent away. Still time for maybe one last chance. Rossi towards the top of the 18. 15 seconds left, and that will do it. Goals in the 25th, 45th, and 77th minutes. A picture-perfect home opener for the Columbia Lions as they dominate Fordham 3-0. What a win for Columbia. And they have an unbeaten opening weekend. A draw at Drexel and a complete 
performance by Columbia today to give them the three nothing win and they take momentum with them to Colorado. So they'll take on Colorado College in Denver next weekend. The start of a three game road swing and what a way to take momentum into it because the Lions wore it out to an early start and never looked back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't ask for more. You know, maybe that Drexel game was a little disappointing that you didn't come out with a, a victory in that one, but you got a, an opportunity 